Peak Design has come up with many successful Kickstarter campaigns, and this is no exception to that. However, do these travel tripods live up to the hype and alongside their camera bag counterparts? Well, let's find out and see if these things are really worth the value behind their price tags. Hey fam, I'm Mike, nurse, photographer, and videographer. And here on this channel, I help new camera shooters get the most out of their gear in order to maximize the most out of their creation process. In this video, we're talking about the travel tripod, its features, pros, cons, and I will share with you my experience and who I think this is for. So generally speaking, what do you shop for when you look for a tripod? The weight matters, the size matters, and it matters how easy and convenient it is for you to set up and get the shot. The features for this tripod. Of course, we got the carbon fiber and the aluminum version. The carbon fiber comes a little over one kilo, almost three pounds, claiming 20% stability. The aluminum version comes at one and a half kilos, or nearly three and a half pounds. They both have low profiles, and when stood tall, it's about 60 inches or 152 centimeters. Setup is quick and easy with their latch lock system. Apparently their office record is 9.8 seconds. Let's see if we can beat that. Okay, first try. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna set this whole thing up and put the camera on top. I'm sure it just means for deployment for the office record, but let's give it a try. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I messed it up already. Yeah. Oh, it was locked. All right, this is the time that it took to put the camera on, and this is the time it took just to uh, set up the tripod. You can carry the tripod in different ways. You can use the camera strap, or you can use the bag that it came with. Personally, I just use the Peak Design camera strap that I already have, or I will just slide it into my water bottle compartment on my Peak Design bag. This tripod comes with its own adjustment ring, and it's pretty unique because it doesn't have any side bulky knobs. All the tripods come with ball heads, and the system of how you adjust the ball head is pretty unique with its own adjustment ring. In addition, if you don't want to use the ball head that already came with the tripod, you can also buy one of their universal adapters so that you can put on your own fluid head, which I have done. You can also put something like a slider on top if that's what you're into. When it comes to the feet of the tripod, I just have like the regular padding that they already have, but you can also switch it out with their spiked feet that they also sell. For the most part, I use these tripods indoors and I hardly shoot landscape photos or videos. And if I do, it's not a big deal that I use these feet. You can get away with them. If you're a serious shooter who knows they need spiked feet, you, you already know. So what are the cons and limitations of this tripod? Let's just address the elephant in the room. Price is one of them. The aluminum version starts at 349 and this one starts at 599. Yeah, that's seriously pricey. The ball head, it's kind of weak. It's nice if you got a camera setup that's just like this. It's cool, you can maneuver it, no big deal. Great, it'll stay at whatever angle that you put it at. However, if you start to be a little more ambitious and you start putting things like a cinema rig on here, not that you need to, like you have camera cages and rods. Yeah, if you tilt this thing a little bit too far and leave it on balance, this thing will definitely move. That's the ball head. If you plan to put unbalanced setups on this tripod, you might as well get the universal tripod adapter and use like a fluid head on it to get more balance and stability. Another thing about the ball head is that it has a limited range of motion. So if I want to take a vertical photo, you can see that it's not perfectly vertical. But if I try it the other way, boom, there it is. Uh, how about if I want to shoot straight up? Okay, limited but I could put it all the way down. In that case, if you need to get certain angles, you do need to rotate or orient the camera in a different way. Let's just rotate this 180 degrees. I can shoot up now, but I can't shoot down. I can shoot vertically on the right side, and now I can with the left side. So this is something you need to keep in mind if you're going to take this out for the first time, and you're like, why can't I get certain angles? This is annoying. Well, you heard it here. Next is the phone mount. So they hide a phone mount inside the column here. And this column, of course, extends back and forth or up and down. You can even reverse it around. But anyway, back to the phone mount. I don't have the phone mount. It used to be kept in here. The reason why I don't have it on here or in the other one is because I broke it. This is the PGY Tech Mantis Pod, and it comes with its own phone mount in one of its legs. So these joints were the delicate parts of the phone mount. 
and it was just too easy to break. Now I'm not someone who abuses their gear. In fact, I probably babied my gear. However, the Peak Design Travel Tripod, I wish they had just enforced it here like they did with, or at least like PGY Tech. However, the motion that winds up killing this mount is when I take this and I try to slide it off this way. Of course, if you're not careful enough and you don't do this at the same time, you unlock and you snatch this. Yeah, it's going to break, of course, at those joints that I mentioned before. Yeah, this PGY Tech one functions the same. It's bigger. So if phone mounts matter to you, I would be quite delicate with the Peak Design version. I mean, it is bulkier. It won't fit here. Or maybe they can hide one of these things in the legs of the tripod without compromising the sturdiness or strength. But anyway, you're buying a tripod, right? Not a phone mount. The legs of the tripod. This is the carbon fiber version. Both of these tripods are supposed to hold up to 20 pounds. However, I've put a 10 pound setup, all balanced, straightened down. But the thing is, I was shooting a wedding and as I had my setup with an A7C, that's full frame camera, with a 24 to 105, with an Atomos Ninja 5. So it's about like a 10 pound, maybe seven pound setup on top of this thing. I noticed that even before I hit record that this thing was like slowly slouching. Like there was some give to the tripod and it slowly started like giving on one of the legs. You could easily tighten the legs over here, but just do keep in mind that these legs, um, they do give, or at least they can give. I do tighten these legs pretty well, but every now and then there's one that needs adjustment. Very, very slight, very slight. By the way, to tighten these legs, it also comes with its own hex tool, tools rather, since there's two here. And it already comes attached to one of the legs, but I just don't use this. This easily falls off, gets lost, but we got a tip for that. So instead, I usually carry on this tool by small rig. It has all these different tools here, other than hex wrenches, flathead, screwdriver. So I just wind up using this instead. And then this becomes my backup. The legs, these flex. They might not be the sturdiest when elongated. Elongated? Expanded? This thing does have a decent amount of flex. So if you're in like extreme weather, windy weather, dealing with waters, strong waters, keep this in mind if you need a sturdy tripod. Especially if you're taking those long exposures and you need that tripod to be as still as possible. And the last thing is it doesn't come with any anchors. You can attach Peak Design's anchors here at the bottom where the phone mount would be hidden or where you could also hook on a heavy item like a backpack. There's also one that you could attach towards the top where the tripod legs meet. For $600, $350, I just thought it would be nice to include these, that's all. I already have them, but it just would be nice. So as promised, let's talk about some pro tips. But before we do that, I just wanna know what kind of tripod are you using? Let me know down in the description below. So another way to keep your hex tool handy at the tripod side without losing it here in its little compartment, you could also use some Velcro. And there we go, You'll, you won't lose it. It'll just make that sound. But if you're using a backpack, eh, it's all right. Another tip is if you're traveling, especially for air travel, this thing is definitely gonna fit in your suitcase. If anything, it's a comparable size to a water bottle. That poor representation. I mean, it looks the same, if not similar. Who is this tripod for and is it for you? I personally enjoy this tripod and the convenience that it brings. It's fast, quick, like I said, for setup time. The weight is not unbearable. This thing weighs as much as one of my camera lenses or bodies. As I mentioned, those little things with the ball head kind of irks me, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. I just orient myself to the ball head right away so I know which way I want to shoot. If I want to shoot on the right hand vertical or the left hand vertical, up, down, whichever. When it comes to shooting in general, whether photos or videos, there's a lot of friction when it comes to just going ahead and taking a picture or filming something because of the whole setup time. And this thing really helps make it easy, which ultimately makes the shooting experience more fun. And a more fun experience helps encourage more creation. Someone could be like, hey, wanna shoot something? You'd be like, yeah, sure, give me a second. All right, I have to lock this, but you kind of get the point. I like how you don't just have to stick to the ball head, but you could also use the universal adapter and use a fluid head. Or slider, whatever. Yeah, this travel tripod may not be the lightest, but it's definitely not the bulkiest. Of course, if you're traveling weight, size, and convenience matter to you, and you got the money to spend, this is not a bad choice. I would recommend it to you. Beginners, if you have the cash to spend for this, not a bad first tripod. Do you need this? No. If you're still shocked about this thing being up to $600, 
look at other tripods in this area. I don't have experience with other tripods at this price point. And it's worth looking into before you buy this one. But for me, I don't regret buying this. For the video shooter, this is a great compact body that you have. And all you have to do is just bring along your video head. For the photographer, this is an easy answer. You just take it as it is, get it and go. Again, for beginners, you may not be in the market for a tripod like this, but at least you have an idea of what you can get for that money. Yeah, definitely look into that PG Biotech phone mount if they sell that separately or any sturdier phone mount. This may not be a necessity for you, but if you want one of the best travel tripods out there, you can take a look in the description. And it's okay if this tripod isn't for you because I have a video about mini tripods over here and I have other videos down here. I'm Mike, reminding you to add life to what matters and I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.